I can say that growing up in the 80s, there were probably three movies that really influenced me and kind of piqued my curiosity about the paranormal. And those would be uh, Poltergeist, The Exorcist, and Ghostbusters. I first became aware of the paranormal when I was 10 years old. A movie called Ghostbusters had just come out, and it really resonated with me. It, it opened my mind to the possibility of life after death, and it's always been a big part of my life. In 1991, my grandmother had passed away quite suddenly, um, and she started coming to me in dreams, and she would tell me things that were going to happen, and that's what kind of sparked my interest in all of it. Growing up in a house where a lot of strange activity took place, and uh, I really wanted to find answers to what was going on there. The paranormal was always scary to me. It's a whole aspect of the unknown and things you can't control that are out there and could potentially affect your life. I got into the paranormal because in 2002 I had some issues in my home that I couldn't explain. When I was younger I was interested in meteorology. In junior high school, high school, and then majoring in it in college, I was always interested in energy and the environment. Um, since energy cannot be created or destroyed, I felt that the same could be true for the paranormal field. I got interested in the paranormal during my first year in college when I tried to find a religion that fit me better. It led me that way through various personal experiences. For me, it's about those big picture questions. The, why are we here? What happens to us after we die? That's what interests me the most. Do we go to heaven? Do we see the people we lost? Is death literally the end, or is there something more beyond that? In life, there's you know a lot, these are questions that are, that are you know can't be answered, and a lot I, I'd like to find evidence to prove that once and for all that these things do exist. There was no noble cause when I started investigating. It wasn't about me wanting to prove or disprove paranormal activity to anybody other than myself. Am I a believer in the paranormal? I would say I'm a skeptical believer. At the start of all this, I was the skeptic, capital S, skeptic. And after all the things I've seen, after all the research I've done, I, I, I just can't be in the dark anymore. And it's almost like opening a door. Once it's open and you've seen what's beyond, it's very hard to forget that you've seen it. And once that door is open, you can't close it again. I'm a psychic medium, so of course I believe in paranormal activity. But I will tell you this, I do not believe it happens as much as people think it does. Without a question, I am a believer in the paranormal. Although I have had a couple of experiences, I still consider myself to be a skeptic, or at least a skeptical believer. But I definitely saw uh, things, witnessed things, got things on film and audio that make me definitely believe. I do believe in paranormal activity. And the reason for that is because there's so, so much scientific proof at this point of um, energy in the environment and how it can be altered and, and things like that, um, combined with my personal experiences and the personal experiences I've heard of others. I am really not sure what I believe in. I believe in the possibility of it, without a doubt. I don't know what's out there. I don't know. I've actually been touched. I've seen things, but you know how your mind is after the fact. You always find reasonable explanations for things. I believe only because of my own experiences. And, you know, the paranormal is a very subjective field, so there's nothing that I can show you or tell you that would make you believe if you already don't. I was raised Catholic, but I'm what I like to call a recovering Catholic. I think I bring more of the religious aspect of it with my background and training in uh, Catholicism. It's not that I don't necessarily believe in a higher power, but I don't know if it's necessarily God. I was raised Catholic. I consider myself a spiritualist, meaning that I do believe in a higher power, but I don't believe that one specific religion has all of the answers. When I got into college, I had to find something that was more me. My religious background, you know, I, I was brought up Catholic, then I was switched over to Baptist. Doing a lot of research, I wound up getting involved in paganism started off as it started off with wicca then it moved to druidism i find it hard to uh, believe in in organized religion because there's a lot of controlling aspects that made me think why does this matter the closest thing that i could define it to today would be a religion called stregaria 
which is an old, old Catholic paganism. I guess you could say I'm agnostic. I definitely believe that there's something greater out there, something greater than ourselves, but I believe that the current incarnations of organized religion just don't have it down yet. I don't have any religious beliefs. I did when I was younger, but I don't have any religious beliefs. You know, I never really had a particular religious belief. Uh, there was a point in my life where I didn't even believe in God. But since I had that kind of paranormal experience, it really like kind of opened my eyes and changed my perspective about some things. I do believe in God. I believe in a higher, um, a higher power. I'm still trying to learn my way when it comes to Christianity. And something that always scared me was demonic possession. I don't know if I believe in angels and demons and stuff like that. I just haven't learned enough or seen enough yet to convince me either way. I was very fascinated with the demonology and of the paranormal and started studying it since then for about, I'd say, eight years now. You know, on investigations now, I even make sure I wear this because uh, I, I've had a negative experience and it's something that I don't want to repeat. And like I said, if you believe in one, you have to believe in the other and you got to pick a side. My approach to paranormal investigations is I like to saturate the place with as much gear and as many gadgets as possible. I'm not psychically inclined, so I need these tools to help collect the data. The more data I have, the better I can evaluate what's going on in a location. I always go in open-minded and I'll do an EMF sweep of the home, set up audio recorders and video recorders, and let the evidence speak for itself. I really like to do the background checks and uh, research the histories of locations that we go to. I like to really know what's going on that I can bring to the team so they understand some of the elements that are happening and uh, some of the claims of activity. I like my um, audio recorder, my H2 Zoom, I'm very happy with for collecting possible EVPs. Uh, I prefer to use my own five senses and my video camera. I think a lot of it is uh, feeling. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, being a regular investigator, like on a crime, it's a hunch, you know, it's a gut feeling. I feel like the more gadgets you use, the more fiddling you're doing with the equipment, and you're not looking at other things that might be going on around you at the time. I'm just, I've always been uh, scared of the dark, but um, I don't think I have any sense about it, any special sense. I am a psychic sensitive. I get... I get feelings, I get objects, I get mental pictures. I always like to speak with the psychics because they have a sight into things I cannot see. And I always found that fascinating. One of my favorite tools for paranormal investigation is the EMF meter. That's the one that I feel has validated what I get and it works with the psychics. So when we're sensing an entity or we're sensing an energy and the meter is going off at the same time, I think that's the best kind of evidence that you can get so far. I think it's very important to experiment in this field. We really don't know what we're getting into. So I think the more things that we try out, the more answers we may find. The more information we have, the more data we collect, the better we can understand what is going on. And I obtain this with EMF detectors, digital audio recorders, tri-field meters, you name it. Hell, even our psychic is a useful tool to me in gathering that data. And the more I've got, the more we have. In 2009, I did have what I consider to be a paranormal experience. And uh, it's funny because all these years, that's kind of really what I was looking for. And uh, it wasn't at all what I expected. And uh, I'm sure you've heard the saying, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. For me, when I think about what the most amazing investigation that I've done, or even paranormal experience that I've had so far, it would have to be the Grand Midway and the whole demon episode. That one still kind of sticks with me to this day. Yeah, the Grand Midway definitely qualifies as a personal experience. I will tell you that is the first time I have ever physically felt something touch me. I didn't have the same experience that um, Brian, Lisa, Ann, and Chris did uh, encountering the negative entity in the upstairs room, but things definitely happened to that house that would lead me to believe that it is active. Now I wouldn't say that it was one singular experience that has shaped my beliefs about the paranormal, 
more like a snowball effect of lots of little things over the course of the years. Uh, everything that I've seen, everything I've experienced, everything I've researched and learned over, th over this whole time has really shaped the way I think. As I was driving, I saw an old man sitting in the back of the car, freaked completely out. When I got home, you know, told my mother what, you know, what it was that I saw, described this guy, and she goes into the bedroom and comes out with a picture. The guy in the picture was the same guy that I saw in my back seat. It was my grandfather who passed away when my mother was 10. The best piece of evidence that we've gotten so far, or I've gotten so far, is a heat signature inside the Red Mill, New Jersey. It was the shape and form of a small child. Uh, in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, at the Phoenixville Library, where I caught uh, what I believe to be paranormal activity on film a few times and it was first generated by a feeling that I had then I saw something then I got it on film. I'd have to say that my most prominent paranormal event was uh, I actually got pushed very hard into my chest that actually hurt a day or so later. It's kind of tough because I would tend to avoid ghosts rather than look for them. I don't actually ask to be touched anymore that used to be one of the things I used to say, it's okay to touch me, I no longer say that anymore. People have always said that once you've had one experience, you're more open to have others. And uh, since my first one in 2009, I have to say I've had about at least two or three more experiences that I can consider to be paranormal. So maybe there is some truth to that. Everything I've been through up to this point has allowed me to grow. And that's why I call myself the scientist. I'm neither a skeptic nor believer. I really feel like I'm somewhere in the middle, and I'm not looking to prove or disprove the paranormal. I do believe. I just want to quantify it. I want to measure it. And for me, that's good enough. You know, I had always went into this asking, is this real? And now that I have an answer, it's only opened up a Pandora's box of even more questions. And so the search continues.